Hello fellow amateur radio operators, Drew here, AC3DS, and today I wanted to share a little bit about choosing an HF radio. A few years ago, I was a newly licensed ham and I had to go through the process of picking out my first HF radio and I really wasn't entirely sure. I did a lot of research before making a choice, but ultimately I didn't have much experience. And so now after having a few years of working with different radios, uh, I just wanted to share a little bit about what, what you might want to look for in a radio and maybe some things that you've been thinking about or researching but maybe aren't quite exactly sure how to evaluate the pros and cons of them. So I'm just going to share a little bit with you about what I've found to be true. Now the radios on the ends here, uh, the ICOM IC718 and the 746 Pro are on loan to me. Uh, but they're both great radios and I really like them quite a lot. And so having this ICOM lineup here of different radios from different times and different, not styles so much, but different capabilities uh, and, and features uh, really helped to provide a nice lineup comparison. So we're going to look at a few different things. The first is bands. So the IC718 and the ICOM7300 are both HF radios, which means that they're going to cover uh, all of the normal HF bands. And that's great. And, and the, the, the 746 Pro does as well. However, the 746 Pro has a, an added benefit in that it also covers uh, the, uh, it also covers VHF in the 144 uh, megahertz range, so, or band. Um, so one of the things that I found over the past few years has been that uh, as I have had this 7300, I have done almost exclusively HF. I have done almost no VHF UHF. And there are definitely times when I wish that I had that capability. I really don't participate in the local repeaters or nets. I don't um, have a lot of the local contact because I don't have a VHF UHF radio to be able to do that. And so, you know, points definitely go to having that VHF UHF built in because it's, it's nice to be able just to move back and forth between the bands and going into that VHF spectrum um, at the same time as being able to quickly switch over to HF. So if you're considering that, know that there is a very distinct advantage to having that already built in. That being said, buying a, you know, a, a VHF UHF radio, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely another way of going about it. You can have the 7300 or the 718 and add, you know, another radio on top. Uh, but as, as you're doing that, and, and figuratively, not literally, you probably shouldn't have it really on top. Um, but you, you can do that. And in the process, you gain those extra bands. But you also now have two different radios and you have, um, you know, the added cost of this radio in, in combination with one of these. Um, and so again, the costs do start to add up there, just like starting with a radio that already has, uh, you know, the VHF or UHF band built into it. So in some ways, the, the price point can be a wash. In other ways, and at other times, depending on the radio that you choose, there might be an advantage there price-wise. But ultimately, I, I mean, I would encourage you, I would say that, you know, having a plan for, have, for accessing VHF, UHF is definitely something that you're going to want to do. Um, now... Otherwise, the bands are the same among all three radios. So you have uh, what is effectually a, a lower cost radio, you have a, uh, a mid-range radio, and then you have um, what was at the time a very high-end radio and is still an excellent, really excellent radio now, uh, but just because of its age, you know, it's, it, you'd be looking at it on, you know, um, you know on, on a swap meet somewhere and so prices will vary for that anywhere from like 500 to 1500 dollars depending um, so really but it's an excellent radio so bands very very similar but the advantage definitely goes to the 746 pro for having that built in uh, so the second thing that i wanted to, to mention was the was antennas now when I was getting into this, I had uh, really big dreams and aspirations of a lot of different antennas. And so, so far, after two years, I have had, I have two antennas. Uh, I have a, <laughs> my wife is laughing at me right now. Um, I have two antennas. I have a horizontal trapped dipole antenna and I have a vertical, uh, you know, trapped uh, antenna as well. And so both I like, both I use. Um, now, that being said, 
these anti these radios are different in terms of what their capabilities are as far as uh, you know being able to attach multiple radios to them simultaneously. So the 718 has the ability to have one antenna connected at a time. So does the 7300. Again, the 746 Pro actually has the ability for three different antennas and uh, one being the VHF antenna and the and the other two being for uh, for HF. Now, what I would say is this, even though I have two antennas and only one radio, and the fact that I switch them out every once in a while is really not that big of a deal. I don't have an antenna switcher yet. It's something that I intend to get at some point. You know, one of those little just turn knobby ones just to be able to quickly and easily switch. Uh, I, just, I just don't have it yet. Um, and so, but even still, it's not that big of a deal. So in the grand scheme of things, even though that I knew that I was getting into the 7300 with that limitation of having only one antenna and knowing that it was gonna require manual process, I really don't think that that's something that should distract uh, or detract you or discourage you from buying uh, you know, a, a radio with only one antenna jack. Um, now, if you already have HF radio rig experience and you know exactly what you're wanting, great. This is doesn't apply to you, but for the new the new ham radio operator that's just getting started, and maybe you don't have an HF antenna even hooked up yet or set up yet, um, just know that it's okay going into it with just one antenna uh, port on the back. Uh, the third thing that I wanted to talk about was the scope, and so across these three radios, there are definitive pros and cons of having uh, a traditional style, uh, you know, VFO. Uh, you know, view screen here, right? Uh, I'm blanking on the name of it at the moment here, but being able to see the uh, the frequency that you're on, right? And, and so the 718 and the 746 Pro are the same in the sense of they're displaying to you the frequency and you can see, uh, you know, like the, uh, the signal report down here, um, but with the ICOM 7300, obviously you have the actual scope, the whole spectrum view, and you're able to see what's happening across the whole band uh, or a segment of the band, depending on how you program it. And I have to say, this is really, really nice. I love not guessing about what's going on on the rest of the band. I love being able just to quickly and easily dial over and find a signal and see a signal and being able to quickly move to it without there being a lot of guesswork. That being said, my experience working with the 746 and the 718 has taught me there is a lot of joy to be had in not seeing this and not being distracted by the prospect of, you know, just quickly switching to, to another frequency, right? Being able to move sl more slowly, more methodically, and really just kind of, um, you know, listening. Um, and, and so if you're, you know, torn based off of price or if you're torn based off of, you know, any of the other factors and you're considering getting something with, you know, with a traditional screen and you're saying, maybe I, I would really, really like this. I, I'm telling you right now, you, you will, chances are you would love this. You will absolutely love this. However, there is a lot to be said for a traditional view of the spectrum and just going one frequency at a time and just you know, panning around using the VFO um, to, to, to find a new, uh, a new signal, a new, a new call out there. All right, the fourth thing that I wanted to, 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 to bring up are what I refer to as the bells and the whistles, right? There's a lot of extra features that come packed into the 7300 and the 746 um, in terms of being able to, uh, you know, have like the noise blanker and having the uh, noise, uh, the notch filter, like there's a lot of other things. Now, granted, there's, there are, there's some great things packed into the 718 as well. It is a wonderful radio. And if I put these two right against each other side by side in terms of, you know, my experience listening to them, I, I have a really hard time sometimes telling the difference between what I'm hearing from one versus what I'm hearing for the other, from the other. That being said, I do prefer the, the 7300 for overall sound quality and the refinement that I get from it, um, but the 718 is still quite excellent. Um, but the other bells and whistles that I think of when I start to look at the 7300 are, are, are quite a few, but probably the one in most particular after the, the view screen or the, the scope here, the view screen, is the 
Um, what was it? I just I just lost my train of thought here. I see that it has an SD card. Is that yes? Okay, yes, the SD card. Thanks. All right. So yes. Yeah, so the so the SD card and the ability to record uh, your your transmissions and what you're hearing on the radio. So the ability to very quickly hit record and start to you know record everything that you're saying into the mic and everything that's being uh, put through the, your speaker there. Um, and being able to listen to that afterwards. There's a lot of, of joy that can be had from going back and listening to a, a, a contact that you've made. Um, you know, I've had quite a few nice, really nice DX contacts, and it's, it's a lot of fun to go back and, like, listen to it. Like, yes, I really, I made it all the way down to Chile. And, like, here I can go back and I can listen to it. Um, so there's that. Another thought. Uh, in terms of bells and whistles. Again, it's not a necessity, but if you're ever thinking about moving into the digital modes in the future, um, it is a lot easier with the ICOM 7300 than with the 718 because I'm able to plug this directly into my computer using the USB jack in the back and I am able to immediately start working with it. Um, same thing as far as for, you know, not just digital modes, but also like slow scan, you know, TV. And, and getting those pictures. Um, so uh, again, it's it's really, really easy. Can it be done with the 718 or with the 746 Pro? Yes, however, both are going to, well, I should say definitely with the 718, you need to have something like the Signalink. Um, I don't know about the 746 Pro. I've never actually tried it. I think it actually does have like a old PS2 style uh, jack, um, but I'm not positive of that. In any case, you should really look and see, you know, if you're really thinking about doing digital modes in the future, if that's something that you really want to do, what would be involved in, you know, in, in making that happen? Because if you're talking about another $100, then this $600-ish radio with an antenna tuner becomes seven to 800 with a, another intermediary device to get it hooked up to a computer becomes eight to 900. You know, you could quickly and easily start to get up to the same exact price range as the 7300. Now, you know, after the fact versus all up front, it might be a different story. However, um, again, it is nice to have those bells and whistles built right into the into the radio. Um, all right, next thing, what else? Um, ah, the tuner. I did want to mention the tuners. So the 7300 and the 746 Pro both have a tuner, an antenna tuner built right into the radio. And that is beautiful and wonderful. Um, I, I use this antenna tuner all the time and it is gorgeous and wonderful and works perfectly. Uh, and same for the 746 Pro. Again, it just works perfectly. However, the 718 does not have that. So here you have a five, $600 radio that's easily going to need, I say need, I'm going to use that loosely here, a, uh, you know, a, a one to $200 tuner on it. So and I use a tuner frequently, even though I know you can have perfectly resonant antennas and know based off of, you know, um, you know, measurements and calibration, what your antenna is resonant at. And so technically speaking, you don't necessarily have to have that. However, uh, just putting it out there, there's, it's, it's really nice to just have the tuner built in. It's also really nice because I've taken the, the ICOM 7300 mobile and to have it built in just makes things a whole lot more simple. So highly recommend, uh, you know, a radio having a tuner built in. But again, it, maybe you already have a tuner uh, or somebody's willing to give you a tuner. And in that case, uh, you know, going with the 718 is definitely not a problem. Uh, so if you're thinking about getting a, a new HF radio for yourself or an older HF radio, and you're trying to decide between the two or three or four or 10 that are out there, um, please know that you're probably not going to make a bad decision. They're all great radios. They're all going to serve your purpose really well. Um, you know, if, if money is no object, then, you know, go with the absolute best that you can possibly afford. I do not regret for a second getting the 7300 and waiting a little bit longer to be able to, to, to get that. Um, that being said, I mean, again, they're all excellent and you won't regret any of those choices. At least I can't imagine that you would. They're all excellent. So 
if I hope that this was helpful for you, uh, please check out my video on my two year review of the ICOM 7300 if you're curious to hear about some of the more specifics of after two years and have you really getting into it with the 7300, check that video out as well. Until next time, 73.